hi, this is Sean, and in this lesson I'm going to continue with the crossing out quavers strategy that I show my students, but this time with melodic phrases. Now if you didn't see the rhythmic version of this one, you can watch that, I'll put the link in the description. It's not essential to watch it first. Basically, if you're not from the UK, quavers mean eight notes, the same thing, eighth notes. So I've got basically two bars of eighth notes, a little bit extra at the end, but I'm really focused on these two bars of eighth notes or quavers. And I'm looking to delete various points in the bar to see what happens to the phrase and to learn to play it, learn to hear it, learn to sing it, all that kind of thing. I did one just with rhythm in the last lesson. In this one, I'm going to take a phrase that I just put in and show you how that works. So this is a phrase built on the C7 scale with a B flat. I know some people will call it a mixolydian. To me, it's just the C7 scale. And that can be played not just over a C7 chord, but in a 2-5 progression, G minor 7 to C7, um, which is going to an F major. So G minor 7, C7, to F, okay? So the phrase I've played in so far, let's have a look. Okay, so what I did was go up the scale, we don't have to worry about the left hand at this stage. Up the C7 scale. Now all these things are chords in the C7 scale. Four note chords. Just by playing one, missing one, playing one, missing one, playing one, missing one, playing one, okay? You'll get all these things. Same as the F major scale, by the way, if you played chords through the F major scale. You'll get the same chord types. But those chords are useful in phrases. So as you see, I took the scale up, down, and then took a broken chord and down the scale. And landing here will take me to the F major in a 2-5-1 progression to F anyway. Let's see how that feels when I play it over a progression. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's our basic progression. Let's hear it just on the computer. Of course, we're using swung eighths, swung quavers. They're not da 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 da. They're da di da 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 di da di da. You don't want them too corny either. You don't want da 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 da. They're they're kind of in between, but they're scored out in jazz. They're normally scored out just as eighth notes or quavers. Okay, in the crossing out quaver strategy, what we want to do is start to delete some. So let's take off, let's take just that first one and delete it. Even deleting the first eighth note or quaver in a phrase will give you something interesting to do. So we'll get this. So it'll sound like this, one, two, three. It's already more interesting than just being on the beat all the time. And that's what the crossing out quaver strategy is all about. Let's delete some things. That in itself is fine. Let's do another one. We'll do a few like this. So we delete, let's keep that deleted first note. And let's delete this one as well. Let's see what happens. I think that'll be quite a good phrase. It's okay. Quite interesting. So you see, just by deleting quavers, crossing out quavers, and I call it crossing out because normally with students, we'll just take quavers on a sheet and literally put X's and cross some out and learn to feel those and maybe learn to improvise over them as I did in the last video, or take a stock phrase like this, a stock phrase, I say a stock phrase, one I've just played in, and cross out certain points and see if we can still play things and feel them. We'll do one or two more. You know, we could cross out a stack of them like that. Let's take off the first four and see what happens. Great, so you get one, two. What if we took maybe just the three, first three off? Let's see what that sounds like. And let's go back.
fine. Great over C7 or 251 in F. And also, let's do one more. Ah, this is one I did earlier that I liked, so I kept. Let's see. Um, I do that because I know I'll forget them. Let's see what I came up with. Okay, so what I did here was I took off the first two notes and also moved this last note. Let me show you afresh. Let's do a copy paste and do one fresh. So I took off, let's see. Let's have a look at that one again. Yeah, I took off the first four notes actually here. And I wanted to delete this last note, but listen to what happens to the end of the phrase when I do that. We don't feel complete at the end. So I just moved it like that. So we get just makes it more complete. Fine. And when you do that, when you have an eighth note or a quaver on the last half beat of the bar like that, push the next chord early as well. What you don't want to do is go one, two. So you don't want the, the note followed by the chord a half beat later. You push that chord early. So in jazz, the last half beat, sometimes even a bit more, belongs harmonically to the next bar. So it really belongs to the next chord. So that chord should come early. I remember one of my teachers saying to me, what if you were Duke Ellington and you'd stayed up all night penning um, an arrangement for the whole big band? Would you have one trumpet player on that last half beat of the bar and everybody else with a chord on the first beat coming up? No, you'd push that chord early. Okay, so that's the crossing out quaver strategy demonstrated on a phrase that anybody could make and lots of variations of it. Really good thing to practice. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Thanks a lot for watching.